the Heat are the Eastern Conference champions and are going to the finals. Baby! And Clash of Champions was pretty damn good. Welcome to episode 11 where I will recap Clash of Champions and give my thoughts on the show. Real short show, not going to take up too much time. Short, sharp, sweet, to the point. It's going to be a long week of wrestling, so let's go. Show opened with a triple threat ladder match. Oh boy, this was fucking amazing. I dug all of this. It was so damn good. Oh, we had a start. Sami Zayn climbing the ladder and Styles throwing that small ladder at him and just clobbering him with it. From the floor, Zayn was three quarters of the way, just piffed it at him. You know, like a lawn dart. Got him real good. That was good stuff. Uh, the Swanton from Hardy. Top of the ladder to the outside through Zane. You know, straight through the ladder. As always, awesome spot. Um, Yeah, like, you know you're going to get it from a Hardy ladder match, but he sort of mixes it up. And yeah, this was a good one. Uh, Sami Zane's use of the handcuffs was oh so sneaky and oh so good. I dug it. I dug all of it. Um, a lot of people were a bit eh, cringed by the the Hardy through the ear stuff, but that shit doesn't bother me. Um, that's that's cool. Um, we saw Randy Orton with the the Hardy and the ear stuff a few years back, but handcuffing a guy to the uh, to the ladder through his eardrum that's different. So to me, it was fresh. It was cool. I dug it. Happy days. Um, Zane sneakily handcuffing him stuff, himself to Styles, I thought was real crafty and it was fucking smart. Um, and then he just randomly plucks the key from his mouth in order to free himself and then he, like, I was convinced it was going to backfire on him, but it didn't. It worked. Zane, uh, climbs the ladder, grabs both titles, he's the winner. Uh, in my opinion, the right choice. Um, I was worried that he wasn't going to win due to WWE logic because of what happened on SmackDown, but he did win. It was the right choice because well, he took time off out of through health. So theoretically, taking it off him would have been a shit thing to do, but they didn't. Um, but yeah, if you need a reminding how good Zami Zane is in a ring, well, y you got it. The guy's a fucking star. Always has been, always will be. So, yeah, this was all of the fire emojis. Happy days. Wicked way to start the show. Um, yeah, you couldn't get a better start. That was really, really good stuff. Um, Truth and Little Jimmy ended up in the wrong neighborhood, which was the restroom. Um, Truth blamed Little Jimmy for that. It was the same old Truth stick. Stick. Nothing uh, too exciting about it, but I think um, Drew Gulak, who's a SmackDown star, when the title was different, interesting, cool, no no harm, no foul. I was happy with this. It was uh, different, interesting, yep, happy days. Uh, Asuka versus Selena Vega, this was always going to be a shit spot to put anybody in. Uh doesn't matter who they had to put here it was a hard act to follow so Oscar and Vega they they did their best the, the match was respectable it was sloppy and clunky in spots but Oscar's amazing that's never going to change and Zelina's only going to get better the more she's in the ring with people like Oscar so yeah no harm no foul um my gripe with these sort of matches it was the same um gripe I had with Dakota Kai Yo Yoshirai takeover um, Vega, who's this the heel, dominated the face champ for for large portions of the match. Um, I don't like that, it, but it's a nitpick, and it's just my view of things. People might agree, people might not. That's cool, each their own, but that's just my nitpick. Um, Vega attacking Oscar post match after faking respect. To me, that's cool. It's an it's an easy and natural way to <clears throat> excuse me to um. To uh, continue the the feud, um, if they have more matches down the road, I think they'll get better together. Um, and yeah, it was cool. 
I said the other night, I don't like when Oscar speaks on the mic unless she speaks like that. That is the Oscar I want speaking on the mic. Not the ho oh, ho oh, oh, he, 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 happy go lucky. No. Put the 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 bass in the voice and put the the anger in from behind the voice because that's when the Japanese you can tell they're intense, they're they're honed in, um, they've you know got the fire behind the eyes. That's that's what the Oscar I want. So yeah, I like Oscar as a heel personally better for this reason. But yeah, I, I'm ha I I want more of that, more of her talking like that, and I'd be happy with that. But otherwise, this was no harm, no foul. It was what it was. Uh, it was it was watchable. If I was to watch the show again, I would wouldn't skip it. So happy days. Uh, Apollo Lashley, pretty much same as payback match. It was respectable. It wasn't an A plus, and it wasn't an F. You know, you'd fallen somewhere in the middle here. So, um, Apollo standing moonsault and standing shooting star press, like they are so amazing for a guy of his size. Like, it blows my mind that he can do those two moves so easily and so flawlessly. It, it's amazing what that guy can do, but. The ending sequence with Lashley hitting that it was just this big massive chest slam, basically like a choke slam, but you know, in the chest and just fucking bang. I thought that was cool. You know, something new to his arsenal. Um, followed up by the hurt lock, which is just a full Nelson. Um, that was good stuff. Good ending. I enjoyed that. And another match that if I was to watch the show again, I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't hesitate to sit there and watch it. I wouldn't forward through it. So that was fine. Um uh, Profits and Gaza Andrade. I was not looking forward to this match going in, um, but they surprised me. Andrade and Gaza, when they have them working as a team cohesively, they prove that they are a really good team. Doesn't mean much at the moment because Gaza hurt, but um, yeah, when they had them working together instead of this stupid, oh no, he has to walk out on this person, or he has to walk out, no. Just, they they worked well. They had good cohesion, good symmetry, and I really enjoyed it. And this match was actually a lot of fun. Um, I originally thought the ref fucked it, but when they showed Gaza laying there at the end, it made sense as to why they did it. And I just don't think there was enough communication. Maybe Montez didn't communicate properly. I'm not sure. Um, but it is what it is. Like performer safety and health comes first. They maybe could have uh, communicated a bit better and they could have hit, you know, some other move on on Andrade and, and won the match a bit more, a bit more convincingly, a bit more cleaner. But it was what it was. Um, I liked that they showed a recap of the Profits on Raw Talk because Angelo Dawkins is obviously a big NBA fan and that's cool. I'm, I'm an NBA fan too. Um... He compared Andrade and Gaza to Paul George and Kawhi Leonard of the Clippers. If you're an NBA fan, you'll understand. They are selfish pricks. And Dawkins said that they are focused on the wrong things. And he basically implied that they're selfish. And because of that reason, they won't get it done. And that's pretty much what's been ringing true. So I actually really enjoyed that they showed that. Um... Yeah, as I said, I think the ref was told in his earpiece, look, count the three, it is what it is. And that's fine. Wasn't a four count. Um, uh, Gulak was getting interviewed backstage. This was always going to lead to Truth winning the title back, but, you know, it was harmless. Um, the only thing I didn't like was uh, Gulak was saying, I'm dedicating the title into Tozawa, who apparently got eaten by a shark on Raw. What? Uh, don't bring up the beach scene. Uh, Raw was horrible. Don't bring that up. But otherwise, yeah, Truth lost the title. Truth won back the title. Stays on Raw. It is what it is. Um, they probably could have had Gulak running around with it or SmackDown for a little while, and then put it on someone, and then have them draft it over to Raw later on anyway, and it wouldn't have mattered too much. So, but you have to have the title on Raw because it was a USA Network invention, apparently. So whatever um bailey came out open challenged someone and open 
had an open challenge for someone and then shut it as soon as she opened it and said, no, nah, I win by forfeit, rah, 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 because Nikki Cross was unable to compete, apparently due to COVID, blah, blah, blah. Um, but Asuka ended up coming out. They had a locker room full of talent. A locker room. Like, you had Shayna and Nia who were unable to compete. So you had Liv and R Ruby Riot booked for the show. You could have had one of them come out. You could have had Dana Brooke come out. You could have had Lacey Evans come out. You could have had Naomi come out. You could have had anybody. And you have Asuka. We saw this match at SummerSlam. We don't need to see it again. But, anyway. The match was so-so. It didn't... It wasn't given enough time to get humming. Um, if it was always going to end in a DQ, as I said, pick someone else, give them a bit of limelight, even if it's for five, ten minutes. It's not going to hurt anyone. Get Dana Brooke out there. Give her, give her some, some time. Whatever. Anything. You didn't have to pick someone who'd already won on the show. No, it's just... No. But anyway. Um, but yeah, Bailey wins... By DQ. Ah, sorry. Bailey loses by DQ because she hit Oscar with the chair. Banks come back. Hit Bailey with the chair. For mine, she is back way too quick. Um, you know, they're playing up the neck injury with the, the collar and all that sort of stuff. Um, so have her off TV. Like, have her on TV via video links and stuff, but don't physically have her in the arena just yet. Like you're rushing the angle. Give it, give it some, give it some room to breathe. Don't just, don't just push it on people. People don't need it rushed. People don't want it rushed. If you want to have the match at Hell in a Cell, that's fine. You've got a month till you get there. You could wait another two weeks. Had video link uh, interviews in that time. No need to rush it. No need, but. Um, but yeah, as I said, if they're playing up the neck injury angle, why was Sasha just allowed to you know, wave a kendo stick around willy-nilly? Now, all that jolting hurts your neck. It, that stuff doesn't make sense. It drives me nuts. Um, so bang some Bailey until this gets really cooking. Um, it's been sort of meh for me. I'm sure it's going to pick up and it's going to it's going to rule all sorts of ass. I have no doubt. But for now, because it's only simmering, it's it's just meh for me. But it'll pick up. I have no doubt. I'm not shit canning it. Let's get that straight. Um, Orton took about fucking three years to make his entrance, which was fine because when this started I'm like there's only this in the main event to go and there's like an hour left on the show I was like whoa but um Orton come into the ring just I don't know why but while Orton was making his entrance I'm like this has a really big fight feel to it really does and I really dug that it was really something I was I enjoyed the fact that I was so hyped for it um Orton stopping during his entrance, staring down the ambulance over his shoulder. That was good storytelling. It was really good visuals. I really enjoyed that. Um, the viciousness from McIntyre early days was well, something we don't see enough of from him, in my opinion. Um, I think we need to see more of that side of him, like borderline heel uh, Drew, but not. Um, just the viciousness of it. Um... When the big show showed up, I was like, oh, really? I was like, you fucking kidding me? But then when Christian showed up, then when Michael showed up, I'm like, okay, it makes sense now. So I initially didn't like it, but by the end of the match, I was like, all right, it makes sense. All the people that Randy's punted over the last month or two have come back and it's bit him on the dick. And yeah, every flare driving off in the ambulance was... Yeah, it was different. So, all four, all four uh, legends, I guess you call them, um, that Randy put on the shelf, all, all got their, um, their retribution. Ah, there's that word again, uh, retribution. And um, yeah, it sort of smooths over Randy losing, I guess. 
But it is what it is. Um, the claymore that snapped off the door I thought was pretty cool. It was, it was obvious, but it was pretty cool to watch. Um, as was the windscreen spot. Windscreen spot always pops me. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just does. Um, Drew winning, I think, sets the table for LNSL. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how they get there, if they get there. Um, whether they add someone like Keith Lee or do a a multi uh, a four five six multi man something I don't know um so we'll wait and see we'll wait and see uh, I must say I love these shorter pay per views already up to the main event this is like Attitude Era WWE like the pay per views didn't drag they went two and a half to three hours perfect perfect like before I knew it I was up to drew and orton i was like oh this is all sorts of lit this is this is amazing it helps when the show's got good wrestling on it too but the to shorter shows definitely hit for me um jay came out first with the the lay on i'm not sure of the actual samoan name but it just looked like a lay um then roman comes out without a shirt on we we all heard that he was coming out without the chest protector on. He comes out with no shirt on. Um, to me, that just looks right. It hits right because the dude is fucking yoked. He is huge. Oh man, he's a beast. Like they, when they announce him at like two seventy five, two sixty five. Like that's a weapon. Whew. Um. The match had good spots. It wasn't your, your technical masterpiece. It was just two guys beating the shit out of each other, and it was fine. Uh, I really enjoyed the spot where Roman kicked out of the super fly splash, but he got the, the arm up like this and, and a low blow at the same time. I reckon that was genius work. Whoever thought of that spot was good. Um, I loved that. Um, but this was all about the ending for mine. The match itself was... Yeah, it was what it was, but this was all about the story at the end of the match. Um, you know, Roman's beating the shit out of him, and he wants him to say that he wants Jay to say that you know you're the tribal chief, blah blah blah. Um, makes him look straight down the barrel of the camera, and Jay's like, "Not today, you know that's it's all good stuff. All of that story-wise is all good stuff." Um, he just keeps pounding on poor Jay, like Jay copped a beating. Um, Charles Robinson said to Roman, I'm going to end this match. And Roman looks at him like, you're going to do what? Like, and then he follows it up with, I've been whooping his ass like this since we were kids. That is savage. That is just stone cold savagery. Like, that's just, <laughs> oh, that's just, I've got zero fucks to give, and if I had any, I still wouldn't give them. That was stone cold. It was, oh, wow. Uh, Jimmy Uso coming down, limping down to the ring. It was fine. I was happy with this. Um, Jimmy came in. He said, I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to throw in the towel. And Jay's like, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then... Roman just kept pounding elbows and forearms, and it was just savage. And then Jimmy gave in, threw in the towel, which was fine. I'm happy that Roman wins that way. That's, you know, that's what a good heel does. Remember Brock versus Randy at SummerSlam a few years ago? Savage. Um, the only nitpick I had about all of this, I didn't like... Jimmy, Jimmy getting in the ring at the end and looking after his brother, I was, that's fine, that's no drama. I didn't like, and it's my nitpick, I didn't like that Jimmy gave in and told Roman what he wanted to hear. It, it's a little bit of a weakness. There was, the match is over, Roman's just standing there. There's no need for Jimmy to turn around and go, Oh, you're the tribal chief, is that what you want to hear? Like, who cares? Just look after your brother, don't worry about him anymore. Like, to, that's the only part I didn't like, but it's such a nitpick. Otherwise, this was all quality shit. All quality shit. And if you look at Paul Heyman's face as the show's going off the air, 
he is looking at Roman Reigns and he is in fucking shock. He's like, oh my God, I didn't know you were capable of this. And that's a man who spent a lot of time with Lesnar. But that's good facials, good facial expressions from Heyman. But yeah, this main event ruled all of the arse. Not quite as good as the ladder match for mine, but it ruled all of the arse. It was a, it was a good end to a good build. And as I said leading up on the SmackDown recap, it's so, so difficult to tell this kind of story when everybody knows who's winning the match on the event. But people were so excited for this match, regardless of knowing who was winning, that it blows my mind how good of a story they've told with this. And whether they continue it, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's next for Roman or whether Jay's going to continue to be in this position. I, I don't know. But, yeah, the main event ruled ass. The opener ruled ass. And a lot of the stuff in the middle was fantastic. It was a lot of good wrestling on this show. Just under three hours. Perfection. More of this, please. More of this, please. But yeah, that was Clash. Boom. Nice and short and sharp like I promised. Got Raw tomorrow. Tomorrow my time. Um, uh, hopefully it's a better show than last week. Still got to catch up on G1 before G1 is on tomorrow night. Oh, wow. This week is chock-a-block. Chock-a-block full of good wrestling action. Can't complain. I should complain. I won't complain. It's just going to make me a very tired boy. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, that was Clash. Good show. Um, raw live coverage tomorrow night over at bodyslam.net. Check it out. Uh, your boy Dave will uh, have you covered. No stress there. Lots of um, opinion pieces, news pieces. Um, the Push is the, the main podcast for for the website. They're doing a lot of interviews on there. Cass, the owner of the website, and Dom. Um, as I've said before, they've done Gregory Irons, Danny Jordan, uh, Vampiro, and the producer of his movie. Uh, they had FTR on the other day. And they got a couple lined up, but I can't remember who they are. But there, they're doing some some really good interviews with some real top talent. Um. Yeah, just a lot of exclusive stuff on there. A lot of really good opinion articles and stuff. So check it out. It's all good stuff. And plus, we are the official sponsor for The Crown Jewel. NJPW's own Chase Owens Twitch. So make sure you check that out too. Don't be shy. Give us a try. Ooh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. But I'll be back. Uh, in a day or two with some G1 stuff G1's getting hard to sort of as I said I was trying to do two nights at a time um, but it's getting harder and harder because now they're bunching it together like I think they're doing like four nights in a row at some point so yeah it's, it's getting hard but I will be doing my best never you worry your pretty little face but yeah this was Clash and I'll be back in a couple of days with some, some G1 stuff. So I will speak to you then and go to Heat when they play the Lakers. See you. Bye.